If you've ever wanted to know how to use kudzu to make baskets, then I'm going to show you exactly how. Today, right here in my studio, I'm Matt Tommy, and I've been making kudzu baskets for going on 30 years now. And some people call me the king of kudzu. I don't have a crown yet, but <laughs> I know a lot about kudzu, and I'm really excited about helping you to be able to create uh, incredible baskets uh, from kudzu as well. Make sure that you subscribe right here on this channel so you can keep up to date with all the things that I'm doing uh, in basket making, not only doing tutorials, but also sharing my classes and also great interviews with other makers who are doing great things with baskets. Now, kudzu. Well, let me just kind of say, I started out with kudzu about 30 years ago. Um, I was a student at the University of Georgia and found a book on basket making, and I didn't have the things that they were talking about in the book, but I had all this kudzu behind my uh, college dorm uh, in uh, Athens, Georgia. And so I was like, wow, I bet I can make the same stuff that there's, I'm seeing in the books out of these, you know, out of this kudzu vine. And so I went out with a pair of, uh, you know, kitchen shears, pocket knife, went out and started pulling this kudzu out of the woods and started making baskets. And the rest is history. <laughs> I did it for about, uh, I don't know, 13 years or so as a hobby. And then uh, these last 12 or 13 years, it's been my profession. I've had a gallery and studio here in Asheville, North Carolina, and it's been awesome. And um, I've been doing commissions and uh, woven sculpture and uh, installation work and, uh, you know, all kind of beautiful work for uh, luxury mountain homeowners here uh, in the mountains and in all of the country. But kudzu has always been my love. And um, most people hate kudzu because they're like, you know, it grows a foot a day. It's invasive. Nobody knows what to do with it. But I'm telling you, it is the best basket material in the world. It's awesome. And the great thing is most, most of the time, everybody wants to get rid of it, which is even better. And so um, when you are looking for kudzu, um, there's a number of kind of, I, I would just call them signposts, if you will, that you want to you wanna look for and think about as you're starting uh, the process. Number one, uh, you can, quote unquote, can harvest kudzu for kudzu baskets um, any time of the year. All right. I prefer to get it in the winter time. That is after the first big hard frost, we call it, um, where all the leaves and foliage have died. That's when I prefer to get it in the winter. Now, you may be asking, well, why is that? Well, I like to get it then because the sap is down in the kudzu. Also, all the, the foliage is down, all that kind of stuff. It's a lot easier to see. Uh, it's a lot easier to pull. A lot of times we say sappy, snappy uh, when we're talking about vines, and kudzu is especially that way. If you go to pull it in the summertime out of a tree, a lot of times it will snap because it's got so much sap in it. So if you'll wait till the wintertime, you get a much nicer vine. All the foliage is gone. You don't have to deal with bugs. You don't have to deal with critters. You don't have to deal with any of that kind of stuff. And I... All in all, the vine is stronger during that time of year. Now, that is when I get it, and I use what's called the runners. And I was just going to show you, this is kind of what the runners um, look like. Now, these are dried. Um, sometimes I'll harvest things, and, uh, you know, when I harvest it, I'm like, do I want to keep it now, or do I want to, um, you know, like keep it like this? Do I want to keep it whole, or do I want to split it? And so most of the time, I'm going to split it. And when I split it, I'll put it into rounds like this. So you can literally see, I think I've got a piece right here. Um, yeah, this one is kind of torn, but you can see, see how that looks? You can see that white inside. This is the whole vine, a little bit bigger than a pencil. And then this is what it looks like split. So I literally just take my hands and go like this and split it right down the middle. Super easy um, to do. And if it gets off a little bit, you can cut it with your scissors or you know do it with your knife, but easy, easy peasy, all right, to be able to do. Now, if I'm keeping it whole like this, I would just, like this has been in my studio for uh, since last year, I would just take this and, and dry it and keep it ready. When I'm ready to go, I'll just put this in um, water to soak overnight, or I can put it in boiling water. And, uh, and bring it back until it's pliable and then I can split it. Same thing with this. I would put this into um, some really hot, not boiling, but really hot water until it's flexible to be able to use again and uh, really, really um, great material to use. I wanted to show you the difference though between, for example, a runner that is really straight, 
really long and grows along the ground versus something that grows up the trees, which is actually a lot of what people see. Now, let me show you the difference here. This, see how that looks? That is a real, that, that is a vine that's a very young vine, maybe a year old or two years old, and filled with pith. All right, same kind of thing. You can see this is a young vine, but see that little green kind of uh, yellowy on the side right there? Like this, like right in there, see? That's the wood that's starting to develop in the kudzu. Now this is still very nice to be able to be used, but look at this. When you get into vines that are older, look at that. See that wood starts to grow and the pith starts to decrease. And then look at this, by the time it gets mature, that wood is really growing. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that this stuff is like really, really rough and tough. This is the stuff that grows up the trees. And I figured out over the years that kudzu that grows up the trees develops a more woody consistency. And so if you're going to be doing things that are really kind of rough hewn and rustic and that sort of thing, if you're going to peel these and uh, do coiling out of, if you're going to make like kind of rough bread baskets and kind of functional rough and tumble baskets and that sort of thing, this kind of stuff is great, great for that. I actually use it um, in random weave a lot. Like when I'm making random weave baskets, you can see in this, like I'm using grapevine right there. I'm using honeysuckle that's been peeled. And then all of this, I'm using that really rough, um, you know, kudzu vine. And it looks great. It looks great for that kind of these nested baskets. Now, if I'm doing a really fine, fine kind of twined work, like for example, something like this, which is essentially, see that wall hanging right there? Um, all these wall hangings that I do and um, the fine weaving that I do, all of this, look at that. See, that's a lot finer weave, all right? There's no way that I could get this out of that material. All right, way too big. So I'm gonna use this nice small material for that and I'm gonna use my jerry stripper and cut that down and uh, flatten it, cutting it down and, and make it a really nice um, you know, material size that I can use um, to get the, the scale that I want. Sometimes when I'm doing like, um, you know, something like this, for example, that is a rib basket, I, most of the time I'm using runners as well. Although sometimes, uh, it depends on the, if I'm doing a huge one of these, like this is a pretty big basket. If I'm doing, you know, a bigger one of these, sometimes I'll use some of the stuff that grows up the trees, but most of the time, I want flexibility, I want a uniform size, and the runners are really, really best for that. And you can see this is, what is, you know what that is? That's kudzu. That's the big kudzu that grows up the trees. So that's great. That stuff is great for rims and that sort of thing, but not as great for um, the weavers, all right? And you'll ask, I know, this is bittersweet, and this is, this is grapevine um, in there as well. Now, if I'm, if I'm doing something which is a lot of my work, um, which is something that like really fine, you can see that is a, this is a big basket, very finely woven, but all of that is kudzu and the, this is poplar bark in here. But again, I can't get this fine of a weave out of something big and chunky like that that comes out of the trees. So my go-to again is this really small, um, you know, twined material. Um, or runner material that is uh, that's from the kudzu. Now, here's what I would say. When you are harvesting uh, kudzu that grows up the trees, uh, again, wintertime is best, but if you want to get the bark off of that big stuff that's, that's grown up in the trees, because sometimes, listen, sometimes that stuff is like big, big. Like sometimes you get as big as your arm. If you'll harvest it in the sp late spring and early summer, and pull those big old pieces down out of the out of the trees, you can peel the bark off of that and then you can get two for one. <laughs> this is great. You can actually get all of the meat, if you will, of the vine and use it for, you know, whatever you want to use it for weaving wise, big, you know, that thicker material, but you can get that bark off of there and you can get a great, great twined uh, material. And you, you know, when you split it open, you'll see that bark wanting to peel off in the spring and summer when the when the sap is high 
and you can peel that right off and you can again get big fat weaving material and you can get that small bark off of there as well. You can also break that big stuff down as you know and get into into smaller stuff if you want to do cordage, if you want to do uh, braiding with that, if you want to take it for example and um, sometimes I have even pounded it. You can pound it and get it really really fibrous and do all kind of really cool things um, with that. I've even heard of people spinning uh, kudzu before. I can get kudzu down very easily. Like here's one, um, here's some that I was just breaking down the other day and you can see I get that down. This is an eighth of an inch. So we've gone from something like this to something like this and you can see that's very small, very nice. And once you put that in the water, it's super, super awesome. Now, one other thing I want to tell you about um, harvesting and using kudzu. I love to use a product, and I don't get anything off of this, <laughs> but I use I love to use a, a product called BoraCare. Um, I found years ago when I first started my studio um, here in Asheville, I found out that little bugs love, love, love kudzu. Why? Because of all that pith. All right, and so Boracare, and there are other products out there like it, but I just started using Boracare. I found out about it because it's what people evidently spray um, log homes with in order to keep powder post beetles, that kind of thing out of it. So I mix up a light solution of that in a spray bottle with warm water and spray that on my kudzu when I bring it into the studio after I've split it, all right? If I'm gonna store it and not split it, I would spray it on there too. But since I started doing that, I have never, ever, ever, uh, knock on wood, had another problem with any powder post beetles or things like that. You can put it on your grapevine, you can put it on your honeysuckle, you can put it on any kind of vines like that. Um, but especially kudzu, because kudzu's got that real pithy material. Um, and it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful preservative. And then you can start, um, you know, you can store that for as long as you need. Storing kudzu, just like any natural material, you want to store it in a cool, dry place. Um, never, ever, ever put it in plastic. Um, I have a lot of shelves um, here in my studio. In fact, you can see um, over here. I'll walk over here so you can um, you can see. Um, this is where I have um, all of my kudzu stored. And you can see it's just, I size it and I put it up right here. And um, the same thing with my, you know, my foliage that I use and also bark that I use and everything like that. So just really easy to um, to store. And again, when, once you have that, um, you know, that boric here on it, it's super nice and easy to be able um, to use. And, and it lasts for years and years and years. Hopefully you'll use it quicker than that. But if you need to, to keep it for a while, uh, you can definitely do that. So, hey, listen, I hope you make some incredible kudzu baskets. I've been making my living out of making kudzu baskets for years. Um, my go-to uh, technique has not only been rib baskets, but also twining. Um, I got a brand new course about twining. If you uh, are looking for some more information and you really want a great course on how to twine kudzu and start making beautiful, beautiful baskets, you can get all the information about that uh, right here in the description. All right. Hey, leave me a comment below and let me know uh, if this was helpful for you in learning how to use kudzu. There's also a link uh, to a couple of great articles that I've written about using kudzu as well. Um, and then there's also a great download that I've uh, prepared for you that's absolutely free called Seven Tips for Making Baskets with Natural Materials. And it's got a lot more information, more than I can go into here in this short video. All right. Hey, thanks, my friend, for being with me. Uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button, uh, the like button, share with a friend, comment below, and I will see you soon right here on uh, Natural Baskets with Matt Tommy. Thanks. Bye.